So good afternoon, B2B marketeers. I'm very excited with me today on the line is Scott Stratton, the unmarketing guy. Scott, hi. Good hey, afternoon. Everybody. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys over there? Ah, perfect, perfect. Start to be a cold winter, but uh, we're all fine. <laughs> looking forward to seeing you live. Uh, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to coming over there. My first time, so it's going to be a blast. Absolutely. Scott, you amazed us with this book on marketing. So for those of you who haven't read it yet, please read it before the forum, before you see uh, Scott. <laughs> Scott, uh, we are marketeers here looking at a book called Unmarketing. Right. How should we feel? Are you against <laughs> marketeers? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. I, first of all, I, I don't want you to take offense. I, I am also a marketeer myself. So, uh, unmarketing isn't really isn't anti marketing. It's just anti um, certain ways of marketing. And I wrote the book because I kind of had enough of people being hypocritical marketers, and that was people marketed the way we hate to be marketed to. You know, nobody likes to get cold calls. Nobody likes their door knocked on all day. But we try to find better ways for us to do it ourselves, for our business, our companies, and our clients. It didn't make sense to me. I knew there is a better way, and a lot of people are doing that way, yeah. which is more relationship, more engagement. And that's where you know, it really comes out is unmarketing is, is a different way of marketing, not that it's anti-marketing at all. It's not martyr marketing. You know, we're all in business. Yeah, we all have to get the word out. But there's better ways to do it. So I was looking a little bit at your past, and I saw that you were actually uh, very successful as a viral marketeer. You had a viral marketing agency. You did some great stuff there. Um, okay. And I want to ask you a question, because we are here promoting the uh, – we'll talk about later also the whole thing around content marketing and how you should actually help your uh, target audience by giving them good and relevant content. Um, right. But I think you might know some or you might see some uh, connections between viral marketing and content marketing. Right. And that, see, actually, viral marketing is what happens when content marketing is good. That's really what happens, right? People's, viral marketing is just word of mouth. It's just buzz. It's just our, our online way of saying it. And what viral means is somebody saw a piece of content and said, this is great. Somebody else needs to see this, and I need to share it with them. That's all viral is. So it's very applicable to content. It's very applicable to B2B because we share content that we think is awesome. And the biggest problem I find marketeers and businesses, especially in the B2B world, is that we don't make awesome content all the time. We make content well, because we think it's a good commercial, and that's the, that's, there's a difference. Exactly, and this is exactly the point where I would like to talk with you about because the whole thing around social media – People just don't get it because they still use it as a sending uh, platform. Whereas, right. whereas I, I like very much what you say in the book, you should look at social media as a way to develop long-term lasting relationship, right? Right. And so, well, there's the key word in social media is the word social. And I use the two different methodologies where we are very good at push and pray marketing. We push out messages and then we pray somebody wants to buy. Uh -huh. What word of mouth, what social media is about is pull and stay. You pull people towards you, you keep them close to you, and you stay in front of them. So when they have the need for your product or service, they choose you first. And that's what content can do. It keeps you in front of your targets, showing that you're an expert, you know what you're talking about, because people buy from people they know, like, and trust. And that's what exactly, content, yeah. and that's what word of mouth does for you. Yeah, and word of mouth still proved to be extremely important, specifically also in B2B. Um, now more than ever. Now even more than ever. Now is important. Exactly. So um, one of the things that I read in your book and I really liked is that, um, and, and this is something that we get quite often questions from our customers. I still don't get this whole Twitter thing. I know that you're a big Twitter fan, <laughs> yeah. and I really liked the way you put it in your book when you said, "I just put myself into Twitter for one month, only Twitter and nothing else." Can you tell us about this experience? Well, I joined Twitter in April 08, and my reaction to Twitter was a lot like a lot of people probably watching this right now, which is, this is kind of stupid. You know, it's if people are just talking about what they had for lunch, and what's the point? And I kind of dabbled in Twitter for eight months, and then came January 2009, and I decided to live on Twitter for 30 days. I said, I'm going to walk the talk. I don't want to be one of those marketeers that say, I don't like it, so you shouldn't use it. And that wasn't working for me. So I lived on Twitter for 30 days, and I tweeted 7,000 times. Now, 
the 7,000 tweets then brought me from 1,200 followers to 10,000 followers. But that's not important. Followers aren't important. Tweets aren't important. The most important number that I want you to, to and people to watch this realize is that 75% of those tweets and 75% of my tweets overall, and I've tweeted over 80,000 times now, are replies. 75% are replies. Twitter is a conversation, not a dictation. You can't just push messages out all day. It's not an RSS feed. It's not a, a direct mail piece or something like that. It's a conversation. It's a networking event. And that's how people really want to treat it. And, and uh, I like the point in the book where you said uh, the three pieces or the three steps in successful social media. And right. I really would like you to briefly explain what do you mean by that. And I guess this is mainly to Twitter. Right. And it really is for most platforms. But first, got to pick a platform, one. Just pick a platform where you want to focus on because there's too many choices. There's too many things. New things are coming up all the time. And I like to talk about those things, you know, whenever I'm at a, a, an event. But the three steps are tra traction, yeah. momentum, and expansion. Now, traction is where you need to get traction in a world. And that's the hardest thing to do exactly, in social yeah. media is to get footing. That's yeah. where a lot of the time goes into it. That was the 7,000 tweets in one month for me. And then you get to momentum. Momentum is where you've taken off, traction is hit, because how I treat Twitter now is really totally different than I treated it way back then. Now I'm just keeping up. Yeah. Now I'm just replying to people who tweet to me all day. But back then, I had to initiate the conversations. You can't just start Twitter and say, all right, so where's the people? Why aren't they talking to me? You've got to be active. It's like being new to a, a networking group. If you go to a networking group locally, you could stand in the corner with a drink and just stand there, and you'll get nothing out of it. You've got to go into the circles. You've got to go and talk to people. And eventually, people will see you at next month's event or next year's event. And they're like, hey, I remember you. And that's where the momentum happens. Once you hit momentum, then you start looking at expanding your platform. I didn't launch my blog until I tweeted 10,000 times. Then I had a built-in audience for it. So when I launched my blog, my first post was read by 20,000 people. Wow. That's a big amount of people for a first okay. post. But that's because I waited. I waited, I built my platform first, then I expanded it. And promise people do it first. They'll open a Facebook page, Twitter page, Google+, Plus. they'll go on Pinterest, they'll go on all these places, and it'll be way too thin, way too little, and you won't have any traction for it. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. I also, uh, coincidentally, last week I read uh, an interesting article in Forbes uh, saying that actually you are on the top 10 most influential guys on social media, and they actually not just say that because the amount of followers you have, uh, but they actually looked into the, uh, analyzed the people who actually follow you are real people and not just, uh, and, and so they mentioned actually that with the amount of, of or the, the, uh, the, 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 you have such a large network in terms of reach that if I'm not mistaken is that you are, your message is 2,900 times uh, we'll get to 2,900 times more people than average social media user. Right. And that's really what the, where the numbers, the number of followers isn't the point. It's the connection with those exactly. followers. Yeah. The same thing with any site or even a blog or even a newsletter subscribers. I know a lot of people in B2B get email marketing. They understand it. It's not the number of subscribers. It's the number of people who open, exactly. the number of people who read and react. It's a different than just numbers. And engage. Yeah, exactly. And, right. and talking about content marketing, you also mentioned you have a three piece for content marketing. So you right, have to right. prove the proof and then point and then basically um, and, and then okay, can you give us more about it? Yeah, well, with whenever I'm creating content, you know, one of the things we always do as, as marketers, we're really good at talking. We like to talk a lot and, and say <laughs> things and you've got to give a point, right? But then you've got to prove it, right? And proving it means saying, here's my concept, here's proof. But now let me show you how to perform it yourself. And that's where we usually kind of drop the ball is that we need to not only say things and share stories, but, okay, how do I apply it as, my, as your audience, your readers, your audience, your listeners? The, the, the proof, the, the gold is really in the part where people say, how do I apply it to my own business? Like me, Scott, being unmarketing, sure, you can tweet 7,000 times in a month. That's your job. But what happens if I only have an hour a week? Well, that's the skill set of saying – in your constraints, in your area of the world, what can you do with it? So it's point, um, prove it, and perform. Really, we got to be able, all three of those steps to make an effective content. Exactly, yeah. And and going back to this Twitter game, um, I call it Twitter game because you know you need you have to kind of get into the game, the the rules of the right. game. 
one one critical question for you. I saw on your Twitter profile you have about over one hundred and ten thousand followers, right. but you follow only about thirty five thousand, which is which is a lot because I saw a, a lot of people that have many followers. Uh, yeah. I saw they are actually follow very small amount of people. Why is right. that? Well, um, it, for me, following 34,000 and having 110,000 followers, I shouldn't be following 34,000 people. Uh, I, I, you, can't follow, you can't follow that many people. It's just not possible. I, one of the biggest mistakes I made, if you want some real transparency here, one yeah. of the biggest mistakes I made when I joined Twitter was I used a program to automatically follow back everybody who followed me. I thought it was being nice. I thought it was a courtesy. I thought I was being polite. And it was just horrible because I never read those tweets. And I, I realized that was a huge mistake that I made. I really should be following 100, 150 people, 200 people tops because that's all you can keep up with. Now I have a hidden list, a private list. We call it my awesome sauce list. And that's the people I really follow. And that's who you should. But some people take it personally. If I don't follow them back, they're going to say, hey, why are you being that way? Why, you know, why would you be that like elitist? Or, and I'm not. I, you just can't keep up. I only read my replies most of the day because that's what comes in all day. So I feel sorry for some of the bigger brands out there that have 100,000 followers or, or likes on Facebook. It's a lot to keep up with. Exactly. But this is it come back to the question is that how do you use Twitter? Is it really to send and you just uh, automatically follow people? And because right. what you said is basically for you, Twitter is a way of developing relationship, right? This is this is right. the, the engagement part of marketing that you're talking about, right? Right. And I follow people only, you know, after I engage with them and I finally have a common interest. Then I'll follow them back. So now my following has much more meaning to it than it used to. And that's the way it should be. You shouldn't be follow first and then see if you like them. Because people can talk back and forth on Twitter without following. Like that, yeah. That's the way it works. So it shouldn't be an obligation. It shouldn't be a demand. It's, it's, it's a choice. And, and people should always have that choice. Yeah, exactly. And um, that brings me to the next topic that I would like to discuss with you. And this is quite an unmarketing topic like stuff that you're talking about right um everybody here around is trying to get into to understand or to get the roi of social media right. you're cracking down those people uh, right. because you said actually social media roi is bullshit can you yeah. explain why well i you know it's, it, we're not measuring roi and return on investment properly first is that you know, social media isn't a sales and marketing tool necessarily by itself. It's sales and marketing. It's a listening tool. It's customer service. It's human resources, personnel. There's so many factors into it. To me, you know, asking the ROI of social media is like asking the ROI of your telephone. You know, it's it's just an object. It's a tool. It's a vehicle. You know, it's like giving somebody a hammer and saying, you know, what can you make with this? You know, well, I don't know. It, it's whatever you do with it. Like, if you really want to talk about ROI, my entire year of 2011, I can re relate all my revenue back to somewhere on Twitter, one way or another. But if you join Twitter and to say, I need ROI right now, it's not going to work. It's like walking into a networking event and saying, what's the ROI of this room? And putting a price tag on everybody in that room. It's not going to go too well for you. Yeah. So this is against actually the principle of social media, which is a great tool to get closer to our customers, closer to our prospects and actually develop relationship with them. And what right. you say is that there is actually you have to, um, you know, to, to, to the, actually the, the ROI is what comes later on in the process. And, and I, th I think ROI is almost sometimes a, a fake stumbling block yeah. that people put up in anything in business. Like you can say, what's the ROI of a, um, a mail campaign that we can send out postcards? Well, your ROI and mine can be two different worlds because it's like saying, what's the ROI of the mail or an ad on TV or something? Well, a good one is much better ROI than a bad one. So it's a subjective term. We don't have the benchmarks for it. Yeah. And especially with social media is so important on social, you using Twitter and me using Twitter is two totally different formulas. Yeah. So we can't just say, this is the ROI of this. I don't know what the ROI of talking is. I don't know what the <laughs> ROI of people is. I just know it's pretty good. Exactly. Well, I'm not, I don't want to disclose too much of your uh, talk at the next uh, B2B marketing forum on the 20th of March, but right. could you give an insight into the audience who are actually considering coming and seeing you live on stage? Well, you're going to already be 20% more awesome in your life if you come to that one, for sure. <laughs> I'll guarantee you that. That's your ROI, for sure. 
But one of the things in the talks I talk about, you know, I don't sit there and say, this is Twitter, this is how you use it, or make people feel stupid or bad because they don't use it. The whole point of the talk is if you believe in engagement, if you believe that talking with your market and your customers is a smart move, then let's talk about what those moves should be. You know, we, I, I, I do quite a rant right now. I'm being pretty calm, as you can as see right now, but veins <laughs> will start coming out of my head on stage and get really angry because I'll cover things like QR codes and location-based check-in and how we get really bright, shiny object and we start running after all these tools when in reality – we're not doing stuff we've had for five years right. You know, we're not doing blogs right. We're not doing email marketing right. And I've had experience with email marketing, blogging, direct mail, you know, everything under the sun. And I want to cover those things and say, look, we need to do things we're doing now better, improve now, and tomorrow will be even better too. Exactly. So for you folks, you're going to see uh, Scott Stratton, the unmarketing guy, live on stage at the B2B Marketing Forum. It's an unforgettable experience, so make sure you be there. Thank you very much, Scott. Oh, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome.